Hello and welcome to Mr Tonkin's EdTech and the next video in our series looking at solving IB and A level exam questions using the Casio Classwiss FX991EX calculator. We are looking at the binomial distribution today which you will find on the old S1 statistics and probability paper and also the new 2017 specification AS and A level. If you are new to my channel why not check out my other calculator videos and subscribe if you like what you see. It's now incredibly important for viewers to support the small channels they enjoy by subscribing. It just takes a second and costs you nothing, but for creators like me, it now makes all the difference. So I'd encourage you to subscribe to all the small channels you come across who are under a thousand subs. It will give them a massive boost and help motivate them to carry on making the content you love. Back to the maths, today we'll be taking a look at the binomial distribution and how we can use the Casio ClassWiz calculator to generate both single and cumulative probability probability values. Often in exam questions you will need to figure out for yourself that the binomial distribution needs to be applied. You're looking for scenarios involving a series of independent trials, each trial with a constant probability of success, which we normally denote with the letter P, and where there are two distinct outcomes, success or failure. Importantly, there should be a fixed number of trials which we denote with M, and this distinguishes it from the geometric distribution where you instead continue with the trials until you're successful and then you stop. If you are asked to justify why a problem can be modelled as a binomial distribution, it's important to rewrite these conditions with a clear reference to the context of the problem and not just rattle them off, or you run the risk of not being given full credit for your answers. However, this particular question is very straightforward. There is no context for us to interpret and it tells us up front that it's a binomial distribution. We just need to tap the parameters into the calculator and write down the results. Now if you didn't have a calculator like this at your disposal, you would need to be using the somewhat archaic mathematical table supplied in the formula booklet. But lucky for you, you don't have to. All the values in the table can be calculated in an instant on your Casio device. The parameters for this distribution in part 1 are the number of trials n is equal to 8, the probability of success p equals 0 0.55, and part a asks us to find the probability that x is less than 7. When students make mistakes with these questions, it's nearly always with picking the appropriate range. If you also struggle with this, I think it's helpful to visualise the range by listing all the possible values and putting a ring around the ones we actually need. So x being less than 7 actually means it can take the values of 0 through 6. So the probability that x is less than 7 is equal to the probability of x less than or equal to 6. First up, let's put the calculator in distribution mode by pressing menu and then 7. You can see that the class whiz can produce values for the normal, binomial and Poisson distributions. We will look at the others in future videos, but today we are going to focus solely on the binomial distribution. Now the class whiz can generate either individual or cumulative probabilities and can do this either for a single value or for a list of values. The list option is useful if you have a series of questions based on the same distribution like we do in the first part of this question. So for this one, we are going to choose the binomial cumulative distribution. We've been asked to find quite a few different values, so let's choose the list option. First of all, I'm going to tap all the possible values that our random variable x can take, which in this case is the numbers 0 through 8. We won't actually need all these, but it's quicker to type them all in than to actually think about what we do and don't need right now. Pressing equals takes you to the next row and pressing it again at the end of the list takes you to this screen where we can enter our parameters n and p. The number of trials n is 8 and the probability of success p is 0 0.55. Pressing equals again takes us back to the table view but now we have a second column populated with the probabilities displayed to four decimal places. You can use the direction keys to move around the table and the selected value is shown to a higher degree of accuracy underneath. We want x less than or equal to 6. Just be mindful that the first column refers to the row number, which is a little bit confusing actually, and might lead to some errors when you're under exam pressure. We're looking up 6 in this middle column, 
and then across from there, which is 0 0.9368 or 0 0.937 to three significant figures. For part B, we want the probability that x is equal to five. So we need to switch from the cumulative probabilities to the single binomial probability distribution. Press option, then one, followed by four, and then one again. Our values for x from zero through eight should still be here, but the probabilities have disappeared. Press in equals, and you'll see that the values for n and p are still here from last time. So we just press equals again, and the probabilities will be populated into the table. Scrolling down to five, and, and again, make sure we read across from the value of x and not the row number, we find that the probability that x is equal to five is 0 0.2568, which will round to 0 0.257 to three significant figures. Part C is a little bit more complicated. And again, I think it helps to visualize this by listing the possible values of x and then ring in the ones we want. So here, x is less than six and greater than or equal to three. So x can be three or four or five. So we can either add these three single probabilities together, or we can use the cumulative probabilities and subtract the probability that x is less than or equal to two from the probability that x is less than or equal to five. Either approach is fine, but I normally go for the one that requires the least number of values to work with. So I'm gonna switch back to cumulative probabilities by pressing option, one, down, one again, and one again, and then pressing equals to regenerate all the probabilities. So the probability that x is less than or equal to five is 0 0.7798. Subtract the probability that x is less than or equal to two, which is 0 0.0884, which gives us an answer of 0 0.691 to three significant figures. On to part two, which concerns itself with the new random variable y, which also happens to follow binomial distribution, but with different parameters. We only require a single probability this time, so there's no advantage in generating the whole table of results like we did in the first part of this question. Press an option, one, four, and then this time two for variable takes us directly to the parameter input screen and there is now a space for the additional value of x, or in this case, y. The value of y I'm looking for is two. So we enter it here, n is 10 and p is 5 twelfths. So I'll enter five divided by 12. Now the math tables won't have 5 twelfths, which means that without your graphical calculator, you would have to do this one by using combinations. So 10 choose two, p to the power two, q to the power eight. But here we can just tap the parameters and let, let the calculator work it out and we write it down. So 0 0.105 to three significant figures. Variance of a random variable following a binomial distribution is given by NPQ. The calculator won't do this for us strangely, so we're gonna to have to type it in ourselves. Switch into calculate mode by pressing menu followed by one. The variance of y here is NPQ, so 10 times 5 twelfths times 7 twelfths, which is equal to 175 over 72. You've now learnt how to use the distribution function on your Casio classwares to generate single or cumulative binomial probability values or the entire distribution with the press of a few buttons. And no need to use the maths tables from the formula book. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. I'll be adding more videos in this series soon, so please, please, please subscribe. Not only will you be notified as soon as new videos appear, you'll also be doing this channel a massive favor. YouTube has moved the goalposts and is kicking all small channels out of their partnership program, including this one and I now need a thousand subs to get me back in. Help me reach this target and I can much better help you with your maths revision. Uh, you just need to click subscribe. You could even do it right now. It's just there. Thank you.